This is Reed Daly's Come Follow Me podcast. In this podcast series, lesson and scripture audio are combined for a hands-free experience. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is kindly granting permission to use the audio content heard in this podcast. We express our gratitude for their generosity. At the end of this podcast, you can hear our full disclosure statement or read it on readdaily.live. February 17th through 23rd, 2 Nephi chapters 11 through 25. We rejoice in Christ. Nephi taught that Isaiah's words are plain unto all those that are filled with the spirit of prophecy. See 2 Nephi chapter 25 verse 4. As you read, seek the spirit of prophecy by preparing yourself spiritually, listening to the spirit, and recording your impressions. Engraving on metal plates is not easy, and space on Nephi's small plates was limited. So why would Nephi go to the tedious effort of copying a large amount of Isaiah's writings into his record? He did it that whoso shall see these words may lift up their hearts and rejoice. See 2 Nephi chapter 11, verse 8. In a sense, the invitation to read Isaiah's writings is an invitation to rejoice. You can take delight, as Nephi did, in Isaiah's prophecies about the gathering of Israel, the coming of the Messiah, and the millennial peace promised to the righteous. You can rejoice that even in a day of trouble and darkness, you have seen a great light. See 2 Nephi chapter 18, verse 22 and chapter 19, verse 2. You can rejoice that you can draw water out of the wells of salvation. See 2 Nephi chapter 22, verse 3. In other words, you can rejoice in Christ. See 2 Nephi chapter 25, verse 26. Ideas for personal scripture study. 2 Nephi chapters 11 through 25. How can I better understand the teachings of Isaiah? Nephi acknowledged that for some, the words of Isaiah are not plain. See 2 Nephi chapter 25 verse 4. Wherefore, hearken, O my people, which are of the house of Israel, and give ear unto my words. For because the words of Isaiah are not plain unto you, nevertheless they are plain unto all those that are filled with the spirit of prophecy. But I give unto you a prophecy according to the Spirit which is in me. Wherefore, I shall prophesy according to the plainness which hath been with me from the time that I came out from Jerusalem with my father. For behold, my soul delighteth in plainness unto my people, that they may learn. This can certainly be true for those who aren't familiar with ancient Jewish culture and geography like Nephi was. See 2 Nephi chapter 25, verse 6. But behold, I, Nephi, have not taught my children after the manner of the Jews. But behold, I of myself have dwelt at Jerusalem. Wherefore, I know concerning the regions round about. And I have made mention unto my children concerning the judgments of God, which hath come to pass among the Jews, unto my children, according to all that which Isaiah hath spoken and I do not write them. But Nephi also gave counsel to help us find meaning in Isaiah's writings. Liken his words unto yourself. See 2 Nephi chapter 11, verse 2. And now I, Nephi, write more of the words of Isaiah, for my soul delighteth in his words. For I will liken his words unto my people, and I will send them forth unto all my children, for he verily saw my Redeemer, even as I have seen him. Many of Isaiah's teachings have multiple possible meanings and applications. For example, his writings about the scattering and gathering of Israel might prompt you to think about your need to be gathered back to the Savior. Seek to be filled with the spirit of prophecy. See 2 Nephi chapter 25, verse 4. Wherefore, hearken, O my people, which are of the house of Israel, and give ear unto my words. For because the words of Isaiah are not plain unto you, nevertheless 
they are plain unto all those that are filled with the spirit of prophecy. But I give unto you a prophecy according to the spirit which is in me. Wherefore, I shall prophesy according to the plainness which hath been with me from the time that I came out from Jerusalem with my father. For behold, my soul delighteth in plainness unto my people, that they may learn. The best way to understand Isaiah's prophecies is to seek inspiration from the Spirit. Pray for spiritual guidance. You may not understand everything all at once, but the Spirit can help you learn what you need to know for your life today. You might also find it helpful to refer to the study helps in the Scriptures, including the footnotes, chapter headings, guide to the Scriptures, and so on. 2 Nephi chapter 11, verses 2-8 through eight. Chapter 25, verses 19 through 29. The right way is to believe in Christ. Nephi both introduced and concluded his quotation of Isaiah by expressing his testimony of Jesus Christ. See 2 Nephi chapter 11, verses 2 through 8. And now I, Nephi, write more of the words of Isaiah, for my soul delighteth in his words. For I will liken his words unto my people, and I will send them forth unto all my children, for he verily saw my Redeemer, even as I have seen him. And my brother Jacob also has seen him as I have seen him. Wherefore, I will send their words forth unto my children, to prove unto them that my words are true. Wherefore, by the words of three, God hath said, I will establish my word. Nevertheless, God sendeth more witnesses, and he proveth all his words. Behold, my soul delighteth in proving unto my people the truth of the coming of Christ. For, for this end hath the law of Moses been given, and all things which have been given of God from the beginning of the world unto man are the typifying of him. And also my soul delighteth in the covenants of the Lord which he hath made to our fathers. Yea, my soul delighteth in his grace, and in his justice, and power, and mercy in the great and eternal plan of deliverance from death. And my soul delighteth in proving unto my people, that save Christ should come, all men must perish. For if there be no Christ, there be no God. And if there be no God, we are not, for there could have been no creation. But there is a God, and he is Christ, and he cometh in the fullness of his own time. And now I write some of the words of Isaiah, that whoso of my people shall see these words may lift up their hearts and rejoice for all men. Now these are the words, and ye may liken them unto you and unto all men. Chapter 25, verses 19 through 29 For according to the words of the prophets, the Messiah cometh in six hundred years from the time that my father left Jerusalem. And according to the words of the prophets, and also the word of the angel of God, his name shall be Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And now, my brethren, I have spoken plainly that ye cannot err. And as the Lord God liveth that brought Israel up out of the land of Egypt, and gave unto Moses power that he should heal the nations after they had been bitten by the poisonous serpents, if they would cast their eyes unto the serpent which he did raise up before them, and also gave him power that he should smite the rock, and the water should come forth. Yea, behold, I say unto you, that as these things are true, and as the Lord God liveth, there is none other name given under heaven, save it be this Jesus Christ, of which I have spoken, whereby man can be saved. Wherefore, for this cause hath the Lord God promised unto me, that these things which I write shall be kept and preserved, and handed down unto my seed from generation to generation, that the promise may be fulfilled unto Joseph, that his seed should never perish as long as the earth should stand. Wherefore, these things shall go from generation to generation as long as the earth shall stand, and they shall go according to the will and pleasure of God, and the nations who shall possess them shall be judged of them according to the words which are written. For we labor diligently to write, to persuade our children, and also our brethren, to believe in Christ, and to be reconciled to God. For we know that it is by grace that we are saved, after all we can do. 
And, notwithstanding we believe in Christ, we keep the law of Moses, and look forward with steadfastness unto Christ, until the law shall be fulfilled. For, for this end was the law given. Wherefore the law hath become dead unto us, and we are made alive in Christ because of our faith. Yet we keep the law because of the commandments. And we talk of Christ, we rejoice in Christ, we preach of Christ, we prophesy of Christ, and we write according to our prophecies, that our children may know to what source they may look for a remission of their sins. Wherefore, we speak concerning the law that our children may know the deadness of the law, and they, by knowing the deadness of the law, may look forward unto that life which is in Christ, and know for what end the law was given. And after the law is fulfilled in Christ, that they need not harden their hearts against Him when the law ought to be done away. And now behold, my people, ye are a stiff-necked people. Wherefore, I have spoken plainly unto you, that ye cannot misunderstand, and the words which I have spoken shall stand as a testimony against you. For they are sufficient to teach any man the right way. For the right way is to believe in Christ and deny Him not. For by denying Him, ye also deny the prophets and the law. And now behold, I say unto you that the right way is to believe in Christ and deny Him not. And Christ is the Holy One of Israel. Wherefore, ye must bow down before Him, and worship Him with all your might, mind, and strength, and your whole soul. And if ye do this, ye shall in no wise be cast out. What impresses you about His testimony? As you study this week, think about Nephi's desires to persuade his children to believe in Christ and to be reconciled to God. See 2 Nephi chapter 25, verse 23. For we labor diligently to write, to persuade our children, and also our brethren, to believe in Christ and to be reconciled to God. For we know that it is by grace that we are saved, after all we can do. And note passages that persuade you to believe in and follow Jesus Christ. It might help to remember that many of Isaiah's teachings about the Savior are conveyed through symbols. For example, you may see the Savior in symbols such as the Lord of a vineyard. See 2 Nephi chapter 15 verses 1 through 7. And then will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it, and gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a winepress therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it. Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, it brought forth wild grapes. And now, go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and I will break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. And I will lay it waste, it shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, and behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, a cry. A stone. See Second Nephi chapter 18 verse 14. And he shall be for a sanctuary but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And a light. See Second Nephi chapter 19 verse 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. What other symbols of Jesus Christ do you find in these chapters? What do these symbols teach you about Him? 2 Nephi chapters 12 through 13 The proud and worldly will be humbled.
Nephi had foreseen that pride would cause the downfall of his people. See 1 Nephi chapter 12, verse 19. And while the angel spake these words, I beheld and saw that the seed of my brethren did contend against my seed, according to the word of the angel. And because of the pride of my seed and the temptations of the devil, I beheld that the seed of my brethren did overpower the people of my seed. So it's not surprising that Nephi would share with his people Isaiah's repeated warnings against pride. In chapters 12 and 13, look for words that Isaiah used to describe pridefulness, such as lofty and haughty. Then you might try paraphrasing these warnings in your own words, as if you were writing a message to yourself to warn about pride. See also chapter 18, Beware of Pride, in Teachings of Presidents of the Church, Ezra Taft Benson, pages 229 through 240. Second Nephi, chapter 12, verses 2 through 5, chapter 21, verses 9 through 12, chapter 22, chapter 24, verses 1 through 3. In the millennium, God's people will enjoy peace. Second Nephi, chapter 12, verses 2 through 5. And it shall come to pass in the last days, when the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Yea, come, for ye have all gone astray, every one to his wicked ways. Chapter 21, verses 9 through 12. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentile seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left, from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Chapter 22 Chapter 22 In the millennial day all men will praise the Lord. He will dwell among them. Compare Isaiah chapter 12, about 559 through 545 B.C. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortedst me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon His name, declare His doings among the people, make mention that His name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for He hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Chapter 24, verses 1 through 3 For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. 
and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, yea, from far unto the ends of the earth. And they shall return to their lands of promise, and the house of Israel shall possess them, and the land of the Lord shall be for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives unto whom they were captives, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. In the millennium God's people will enjoy peace. You might find it helpful to visualize yourself in the place of Nephi and his people. Imagine you fled from Jerusalem just before it was destroyed. See 2 Nephi chapter 25 verse 10. And now you are part of the scattering of Israel. How might it have felt to read Isaiah's teachings about the future gathering of Israel and a peaceful millennium? As Latter-day Saints, we have been called to help gather God's people in the latter days in preparation for Christ's millennial reign. As you read these verses, ponder how you are helping fulfill the prophecies they describe. What do you feel inspired to do to help gather God's people? Ideas for Family Scripture Study and Family Home Evening As you read the scriptures with your family, the Spirit can help you know what principles to emphasize and discuss in order to meet the needs of your family. Here are some ideas. 2 Nephi chapter 12, verses 1-3 through 3. If you have been to the temple, the mountain of the Lord's house, you might share with your family how temple covenants are helping you walk in the Lord's paths. If you have not been to the temple, reading these verses together might inspire a discussion about how you can prepare for temple blessings. 2 Nephi chapter 15 verses 18 through 23. Can your family think of modern examples of the unrighteous ideas that these verses describe? How can we avoid being deceived by false ideas about good and evil? 2 Nephi chapter 21. If your family needs help understanding this chapter, which corresponds to Isaiah chapter 11, you might find insights in Doctrine and Covenants section 113 verses 1 through 6, in which the prophet Joseph Smith answers some questions about Isaiah chapter 11. What do we learn about Jesus Christ from these verses? 2 Nephi chapter 21 verse 9. What are some specific things we can do to help fill the earth with the knowledge of the Lord? 2 Nephi chapter 25 verses 23 through 26. How can you help your family members rejoice in Christ? Maybe you could invite them to write on slips of paper things about the Savior that bring them joy. Then during future family home evenings or family scripture study, someone could read a slip. Family members could add slips throughout the year. For more ideas for teaching children, see this week's outline and come follow me for primary. Improving personal study. Look for patterns. In the scriptures, we can find patterns that show us how the Lord works. For example, in 2 Nephi chapters 11 through 25, you might find patterns that show how the Lord warns and forgives. Thank you for listening to Read Dailies. Come Follow Me podcast. Please share this podcast with family members and friends who can find us on readdaily.live or their favorite podcast application. The Intellectual Property Department of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is kindly granting permission to use the audio content heard in this podcast. We express our gratitude for their generosity. Along with granting permission, they ask that we make the following statement. Any products offered by ReadDaily.Live are neither made, provided, approved, nor endorsed by Intellectual Reserve, Inc. or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Any content or opinions expressed, implied, or included with any goods or services offered by ReadDaily.Live are solely those of Howard Patrick Holman and not those of Intellectual Reserve, Inc. or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints.